Holloway, we're exploring the fundamental questions about the universe. We're searching for evidence of dark matter. We presently only understand what 4% of the universe is made of. We're also probing the fundamental particles and forces which make up the universe using the Atlas detector. I work on a number of experiments, including deep clean and lux, and these are comprised of very large detectors that are filled with uh, liquefied noble gases. Uh, this right here is um, part of the mini clean experiment. It's a refrigeration system that is used to liquefy large quantities of argon. These detectors are uh, located in uh, underground mines. Uh, in particular, this will set up will go to Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, where the large amount of rock above the, above the detector will shield it from high energy cosmic rays. So mass is one of the most fundamental properties of elementary particles. Um, nevertheless, we don't really understand how that arises. Um, our understanding um, of that rests on a theory called the Higgs mechanism um, that predicts the existence of a new particle called the Higgs particle which interacts with normal particles in such a way that it confers the mass. My research is that I study one of the recently discovered particles, the top quark. Quarks are elementary particles that are buried right deep inside the nucleus of atoms. And the top quark is a very special quark because it's one of the heaviest particles that we've discovered so far. Actually, it's as massive as a gold atom. We hope that since we don't quite know what's the mechanism for giving particles their mass, that by studying the top quark, this will shed some light into this mystery. I'm searching for evidence of new particles using the Atlas detector at CERN. The Large Hadron Collider at CERN collides protons and protons together, and we use the Atlas detector to study what comes out of the collisions. I'm in particular looking at events in which there's two electrons come out of the detector. So for example, we have the two protons coming in, we have the quarks and the antiquarks from each proton, then colliding, and then we want to guess what happened um, in between it, in between before we have the two electrons coming out. And we can use this to a study for many new physics scenarios. One that we can search for gravity, and trying to explain why gravity is so weak, so we can search for gravitons. We can also search for new particles, so heavy versions of the particles we already know, so a Z prime. And we can also use this to test whether these quarks themselves, which are inside the protons, are themselves fundamental particles, or in fact, they are made up of smaller constituents themselves. So one of the, the theories beyond the standard model that, that might help us explain why gravity is so weak would be um, models that involve the use of extra spatial dimensions. So we currently have um, the known spatial dimensions, three space, X, Y, and Z, and time, but there may be extra spatial dimensions which um, would dilute the force of gravity so that we feel it in its weak form as we do in our three space, one time dimension. So for example here, I've got a diagram where we would live on the three dimensional brain here and there could be an extra dimension that could either be very large or smaller and exponentially diluted where gravity would be located on a different three dimensional plane, generally called the Planck brain. And therefore, as two masses come very close together on the scale of this extra dimension, the gravitational flux lines would be penetrating through these extra dimensions and feel this a stronger force than we feel here. Whereas when masses are further apart, as we experience every day, the gravitational law would return back to the laws of general relativity as we currently experience.